Okay, so step number two is gonna be us creating our subnets, all right? So if you remember the architectural diagram, we're gonna be creating four subnets. One public subnet and one private subnet in availability zone A, and one public subnet and one private subnet in availability zone B, okay? So let's go ahead, we're already within the VPC console. Let's click on the left-hand panel and click subnets, okay? All of these subnets uh, that are currently showing are for the default VPC, right? So as a quick pro tip, let's go ahead and filter by VPC right here. And let's click on the demo VPC that we just created. All right. So now, as you can see, we have no subnets for our VPC. On the right hand side, we're going to go ahead and click this create subnet button. All right. So let's go ahead and begin creating our four subnets. Uh, select the VPC. We're going to go ahead and select demo VPC. Scroll down. Let's go ahead and create our public subnet first, okay? So let's go ahead and create the public subnet for availability zone A. So I'm gonna name it public subnet A. The availability zone, make sure you put uh, uh, availability zone A, which is one A. All right, now the side of block. So this is important, okay? So here's the thing. We assigned a CIDR block range on the VPC level in the previous step, right? So the CIDR block range that we assign on the subnet level has to be within the overall VPC CIDR block range we just assigned, right? And they must not overlap. So when we create the next subnet, the CIDR block from the previous subnet must not overlap the next uh, subnet CIDR block range, okay? So for this particular one, I'm going to give it a range of 10.000 slash 24, okay? And that gives us, I think, 256 IP ranges, if I'm not mistaken, about 256, okay? And let's keep going down. Everything will be the same. Let's add a new subnet. And now let's make the public subnet for availability zone B, all right? So I'm pick the region B right there. And again, this can't overlap, so... I'm going to do 001.0 slash 24, okay? So again, this is going to give us 256 private IP ranges within the public subnet B. And uh, I put the one right here so they don't overlap. And just to kind of show you, if I was to put zero, it'll show that it's probably overlapping. Let me see if it shows. Yeah. It'll show if I did that. Yep, okay, so it overlaps. So let's go ahead and put that one back there. Okay, so now we're good. It just went away. Now, so we got our public subnets. Let's go ahead and create our private subnets. So private subnet A. Let's go ahead and pick the availability zone A. And now for this one, we're actually going to assign it uh, 4,096 uh, private IPs. Because generally, when you, um, you know, creating your VPC and building out your infrastructure, most of your components are going to be located in your private subnet because it has greater security, okay? So you don't wanna expose a lot of your components and resources to the internet. So you're gonna be um, creating a lot of that in your private subnet. So we're gonna assign it more IP addresses because once you create certain components like EC2 instances, et cetera, they are assigned uh, private IP. So you wanna have an abundance of them for your uh, public, excuse me, for your private subnet to, to choose on. So we're gonna be creating 4,096 of them here. So let's put 10.0.016.16.0 slash 20, okay? That's gonna give us 4,096 private IPs. Let's add one more. And that, that doesn't overlap with any of these. And let's do the last one. So private subnet B, all right? Availability zone, we're gonna put B. And then again, we're gonna get this 4,096 private IP. So that's gonna be 10.0.32.0 uh, slash 20, okay? And again, that 32 is so it doesn't overlap with anything we just created, okay? And that's it. And we're gonna go ahead and go down and click create subnet. It's gonna create all four for us, as you can see here on the screen. All right, and that concludes step number Step number three is going to be for us to create our internet gateway and our root tables, okay? Now, before we actually jump into creating those two components, I want to first start off by saying we've created four different subnets now. And even though we've named two of them public subnet, all of them currently are considered private subnets until we create our internet gateway and attach it to the VPC 
and we must also change the root table associated with those said subnets, okay? So let's go ahead and convert our private subnets into public subnets for the ones that should be public, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create our internet gateway. So we're already in the VPC console. If you go down, you wanna click on internet gateways. Once you click on that, as you can see, we don't have any internet gateways. We're gonna click on create internet gateway at the top right-hand corner. Okay, so let's just name this demo internet gateway. All right, and just hit create internet gateway. And as simple as that, we have created our internet gateway. However, our public subnet still does not have access to the internet, right? We have to change the root tables um, associated with those subnets, okay? So let's go ahead on the left-hand side, click root tables, and we're actually going to create and associate the proper subnets, and lastly, we're going to add the, the, the necessary routes in order to make our public subnets actually public, okay? So first things first, let's go ahead and click create root table at the top right-hand corner. We're actually gonna be creating three different root tables. We're gonna have a public root table for public subnet A and public subnet B, and we're gonna have two private root tables for private uh, subnet A and then a separate one for private subnet B, okay? And that's just for high availability. We are only able to attach one NAT gateway to uh, each uh, route tables. So we wanna separate them, okay? So let's go ahead for our first one. Let's name it public root table. For the VPC, we're gonna select our demo VPC and we're gonna click create root table. All right, let's go back to root tables, dashboard. Let's click on create root table again. This one is gonna be private root table A, okay? That's gonna be for subnet A, demo VPC, and create root table, okay? Now one more we're gonna create. Let's head back to the dashboard, click create root table. And then the last one, we're gonna create uh, private root table B, okay? So that's gonna be again, demo VPC, and create root table. Okay, so that is done. Let's go ahead and go back to the root tables console. So we've created our three root tables that we're gonna use. Um, one thing I didn't mention, so uh, when you create your VPC, they automatically give you a, um, a default root table. Excuse me, once you create your subnet and VPC, they give you a default root table. So we're going to associate our subnets to the root tables that we just created and we're not gonna use this default root table at all, okay? So let's start off by clicking public root table, okay? And if we click subnet associations, we can see nothing has been explicitly associated with this particular root table, and none of our subnets have been explicitly associated with any root table, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. We've selected public root table, we're gonna click on actions, drop down button, and then click edit subnet uh, association. So this is our public root table. We want to associate public subnet A and public subnet B, okay? We can keep both subnets, even though they're in different availability zones in this one root table, uh, because we're gonna give them the exact same routing principles, okay? So that's why we're gonna uh, put it on one root table. So let's click Save Associations, and that is done. So we got two subnets associated with the public, all right? Now let's click on our private root table. Okay, do same thing, actions, edit subnet. And this is private root table A, so we're gonna uh, select the corresponding private subnet A, okay? All right, save associations. And then lastly, private root table B, let's select that one, click actions, edit subnet association, and then click private subnet B, okay? and save associations. Again, we have two separate private root tables simply because um, we're gonna be routing them separately. So one root table will have a separate NAT gateway and the other root table will have a different NAT gateway. So we have to have two different root tables for the private, whereas the public, the routes are the exact same. So that's taking some time to load. Let me actually just refresh it. Okay, let me hit cancel real quick so I can make sure I understand where we are. Okay, so they got an associate for the private root table B. Let me click on that. It's B, so that's correct. The public root table. 
it should have the both public subnets, which it does, okay? And then the private root table A should have the public, uh, the private root table, private uh, subnet A, which it does. Okay, perfect. Now, one thing that I did forget, and I'm glad I caught myself, is we must attach the internet gateway. We did not do that before we started creating our root tables. So I'm actually go out of this and click internet gateways. This is the uh, internet gateway we attached. It's called the demo internet gateway. As you can see, the state is detached. So you must click on that, click actions, and then click attach to VPC. The VPC obviously will be the demo VPC. So let's click the drop down, click on the demo VPC, and click attach internet gateway. Okay. Now the gateway is attached. Okay. Let's go back to root tables. We've already created our root tables. We've already associated the proper subnets with the corresponding root tables that we need. And all of our subnets are still considered private, right? We must uh, adjust the roots in the in the root table, okay? So the only public, the only subnets that we want to make public are public subnet A and public subnet B. So we will only adjust the public root table right now. So let's click on public root table and we must adjust the route. So if we click on routes, you'll see it's only routing um, any IP addresses within the local VPC range, right? So there's no outside public uh, IP addresses that can route. So let's go ahead and do that. Click actions right here. Click edit routes. You could also click here, edit routes. And we're going to click add route. Click in here and we're going to select the 0, 0.00 uh, slash zero, which is basically any IP that's everywhere. We're going to click the target. Go down to Internet Gateway, which we just created and just attached, and it's going to uh, pop up here. OK, now, if you don't attach it, as we previously almost did, uh, it won't show up here. So you got to make sure you attach the Internet Gateway to the VPC. So let's go ahead and click on it and click Save Changes. All right. So now let's go to the root tables. And now we have successfully created our three root tables and we've made our public subnets actually public and accessible to the internet, right? So we've actually made our public subnets public and our private subnets, we're not going to change uh, the root table and uh, connect it to the internet gateway because we want that to remain private, all right? So that concludes step number three.